Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using a beautiful Santorini stone that I've been saving for probably over a year now. I didn't know what to do with it. Now I want to make a really cute gnome, but kind of make it look like stained glass. We've done a stained glass tutorial before. If you've never seen my stained glass tutorials, I will put some in the description of this video so that you can do those ones too. They're actually really beautiful. Um, funny thing, don't pay attention to this weird beard that I've done on my gnome. Don't pay attention at all because that's going to disappear. I ended up realizing why bother with such a fancy beard when he's going to be holding a Christmas decoration right in front of it. So I'm going to end up removing all of that and just giving him like a, a mustache area. You'll see. <laughs> so don't pay any attention. Um, please look in the description of my video for links in order to get Santorini stones from Katie. Um, you can message her through Facebook and, uh, and order from her now, even from Canada. So if you've been wanting to get Santorini stones, but can't because you're in Canada, you are now in luck. Please look at this description in my video for all the information regarding Santorini stones. Now you can see the, sh the sparkling in the background. Um, the way I'm gonna do it today, you're still gonna see a lot of that sparkle in the background, even after resin, I promise. I'm gonna show it to you, if I can, <laughs> through the camera lens. But I promise you, I've got the finished product and I can see the sparkle, the Santorini sparkle. So if you are familiar, you know what that is. Sometimes it goes away when you paint on top of it or even coat it with something shiny you seal it with something it's like the uh the sparkles go away but uh i can still see the sparkles in this one so you're gonna love it and now you can see that i've given him a mustache and he's holding on to a christmas ball and he's got a nice big like floppy hat and yeah and his boots. That's it. <laughs> he doesn't even have really a beard. He does, but it's hiding behind the giant Christmas ornament because he is a Christmas gnome. And I've done gnomes in the past as well, so I'm also going to link all of my gnome tutorials in the description of this video just in case you haven't seen those ones before because why not learn from me for free and have fun at the same time. So best thing about this is I can sketch it on with pencil and erase whatever I don't want. It erases nicely. Um, and then you can color it in kind of like a coloring book. I'm just putting little lines where the lead would be. Um, it might not always be lead that's used to put these like little seams in everywhere and mold the glass together in a stained glass situation. I don't know the technical terms, guys, sorry. Um, but anyway, there's this lead um, that kind of binds all of the glass together in that picture. So that's what I've done around the outside. You're gonna be able to see it a lot better when I get out my black paint, but sketch it on first. You don't even need to do this on a Santorini stone, okay? You could do this on a cardboard box that you've painted white, if that's what you wanna do. Um, you can do it on any stone, just find a, a cool shape or find a rock that you like. If it's not a lighter colored rock, like white, paint it white. Give it a really good couple coats of white paint. Let it dry really good. And then get your pencil out and sketch on your gnome or whatever you're going to do in a stained glass form. Just make sure it's white because the color stands out on it a lot better when you're starting with a white surface. So Santorini, of course, these stones are amazing for making stained glass um, paintings. But you can still do it on any other stone, any, on our, any other surface, just start with white, a couple coats of white. So now I'm gonna keep what I want. I'm gonna keep it, which means black paint is going over what I want here. And then I'm going to erase everything that I don't want once it's dry. It just easily erases and then we're good to go. Then we get to fill it in with whatever color we want. So I'm going quickly. This isn't going to be as quick for you guys. 
but you can slow this down. Just mute me so I don't sound like an intoxicated monster. <laughs> and then I'm going to be coming to you in your nightmares. Um, I'm scraping off little bits as well. I'm just using like a, it's a, it's for doing nails and stuff, but it's just like a little sharp tool and I'm scraping off thick pieces of paint, um, that I didn't like that, that didn't look good or I splashed paint in places that I shouldn't have. Um, so I scrape that off when it's dry and you don't even know it was there. It doesn't erase like pencil does. <laughs> now I'm using my little handy dandy desk broom, which is just a fanned paintbrush and I'm sweeping off my <laughs> desk because it's a mess. So now we start with color. Now that everything's dry, I'm actually going to pick out a couple shades of blue. So I'm using medium blue, Cayman blue, and also Calypso sky. These are all folk art. I'm putting a little dollop in my tray and then I'm gonna fill up that with some bottled water. Um, because this is acrylic paint, it's water-based, I'm just adding water and mixing it up really, really good. And it should be like, almost like watercolors. And so I'm just watering down my acrylic paint to make watercolor. I know, it's weird. You can use watercolors for this as well. <laughs> so if you have some watercolors, uh, go for it. I'm going to be using some of my metallic uh, color shifting watercolors over top of this after I'm done. Um, but I just wanted to show you that you can do this with acrylic paint. It dries differently. Um, so it might dry kind of like, um, like watercolors do. And I end up still being able to see the Santorini sparkle behind it in a lot of places. So I'm excited about that. I've chosen the three different shades of blue to go in on all of that background. And with every color that you choose, just add a little dollop in your tray and add water. So I'm using gray that's super watered down for his mustache. And then I'm going to go on to some berry wine for certain parts of his hat and his jacket. So that's like a dark, dark red. I'm using some pretty dark colors on it because it is gonna be watered down, but I still want it to be colorful. So there's a little bit of red here and there. I'm gonna use some eggplant purple, some cerulean blue, some green. I'm, I'm gonna do a bit more of like a, like a orange on his gloves, but I'm gonna list all the paint colors in the description of the video. Um, below so that you know exactly what colors I'm using um, if you want to go out and get the exact same colors but really you get to decide what color you want the sky to be the background um, if you want to add a couple of little if you have like a bigger area to paint on you can add a couple of uh, stained glass trees behind him and use some green in the background with some white like snow on the trees you can do whatever you want. This is all optional. I'm just showing you how I got the look of this one. Um, so yeah, his, his gloves are a little bit orange. His sleeves are red, just like his hat. He's got some blue jeans on, and then he's gonna have black boots. I'm watering everything down exactly the same. And no, I'm not measuring out like how much water to how much paint. I just literally put a dollop in there and and add water till I think it's watery enough. So yeah, there's no science. It's just fun. <laughs> I used a little bit of pink and a little bit of camel to get his nose color. And you can see how the paint is starting to dry uh, on that stone. It's, it's kind of um, drying up in areas and it looks kind of like stained glass. So we're also going to be adding some sparkle to it with some watercolors um, and then resin. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now his giant ornament um, is very simple. I did very simple ornaments, so it's not going to be too much for everybody. Uh, like too intricate. Just red and green. 
and then it's going to have a gold handle and I'm this is a different color red than I put on the hat it's like a bright red instead of a berry wine um, so it's a, it's different from what he's wearing so it stands out a little differently so I'm just gonna let that dry really good I'm gonna leave the snow underneath white and I did water down some gold um, to do the little gold handle on the ornament um, I left the ball on the end of his uh, hat white and the fur above his nose is going to stay pure Santorini white just like every the snow and everything as well it's just going to stay clean white pure Santorini stone there anything white just leave it just leave it now I'm outlining everything it's best to wait till it's all dry to outline everything but I'm just kind of fixing up some of these lines before I add watercolor and make sure it's all dry if you're going to add watercolor over top so it's not going to be a huge amount of glitter it's just very very simple watercolors that I've created here or uh, Yuli watercolors that I've purchased on Etsy I will put the link in the description I also sell watercolors in my Etsy shop I'm actually going to be putting some in there today um, so if you're interested in trying them out on top of acrylic paint like this, I have lots of tutorials. <laughs> it really brings up your artwork a notch <laughs> with some of these watercolors. Um, so I'm just choosing some of my handmade watercolors. It's like a, it looks white, but there is like a, a teal glitter to it or a blue glitter or a purple glitter. Uh, it just depends on what kind of watercolors I've created, but I just want like a very simple glitter there barely noticeable I don't want it to change the look of the acrylic paint only use a little bit of water when you're using uh, watercolors over top of paint um, just make sure you only use a little bit of water it you get a better look with less water there's more sparkle with less water and it also stays where you want it to go it doesn't start like running and traveling into the next portion of your hat or into the red on your uh, Christmas ornament. If you only use a little bit of water, you can control where it goes a lot better. So I'm putting blue where there's blue, purple where there's purple, green where there's green, red where there's red, and that's all I'm doing. Um, on his beard, I'm using a sparkle that has some purple because I think the purple actually complements his his uh, gray mustache so it looks cool as well as his boots there's like a teal sparkle on the black boots um, you can barely tell that there's even any kind of sparkle on it right you can barely tell but once it's resined and dry you'll be able to see what that what magic that has done to your artwork um, and I, I'm so excited to show you that part I love that part um, I do have a couple of things to show you at my desk, um, so that's exciting. I haven't been able to do that for a while. It's been a while. My son's been sick. There's been so much going on, and it's, guess what? Ugh, almost Christmas. So, yes, I've been very busy. <laughs> um, once your watercolors are dry, that's when you want to outline all your black again. Make sure all your black is black, not black and sparkly. You want it to be just black. Um, so make sure you get all of your little lead lines, all everything outlined properly, and then go around the outside, whatever thickness your stone is, do like a black border. So that kind of holds all the lead and all the glass inside that stained glass structure. Um, so that's the border, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I hate painting uh, right over top of that beautiful Santorini stone um, but I'm just doing a border around the outside so if you are lucky enough to have a Santorini stone just paint the sides black and uh, that's what you do so I've let everything dry I'm going to go resin it and let it spend the night in its resin bath and then so that I can show it to you tomorrow um, well show it to you once it's dry and I can handle it with my bare hands but really it's not tomorrow <laughs> stay tuned 
All right, here's an episode of What's at My Desk. You guys have seen these before if you've been to my channel for any length of time. These were snowflakes that I created uh, last year. And uh, I do have a tutorial for those. Just look up Rachel's Rock Snowflakes and you'll see them. I have lots of those going into my shop today. Um, here is a chrome balloon dog. Uh, and some chrome grass below on a beautiful, beautiful, unique, one-of-a-kind Lake Superior stone. Also, did you know that I love us? Because I do. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being patient, waiting around for new tutorials. I have lots coming up. I'm excited. <sighs> I'm feeling positive, and I can't wait to share it with you. Also, <gasps> Are you guys interested in doing a couple of Christmas decorations? Because I have uh, a couple in mind that I've already recorded. So if you're interested, I will be posting not only a sparkly one, but uh, a dotted one. So if you want to see how I do this and, uh, and do it with me, that's going to be coming up as well. Um, but until then... I may as well show you what we work so hard on together. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, these snowflakes are going into my shop. Um, but here is our beautiful stained glass Nomi. You can see this very gentle sparkle of that Santorini stone through the white. Um, so it doesn't disappear. It's still there. If you can focus on that white area, um, you'll notice you don't lose the sparkle. It's there. Uh, it's just under like a glass surface now, that's all. But it's still there, so I want to appreciate that. I'll try and get a closer look at it uh, after I show you the whole thing. Um, but look at all that glitter. You can see it when you turn it in the light. You can see that beautiful uh, watercolor glitter and it just looks so beautiful. I love stained glass. I'm going to be doing more more stuff like that. Uh, so if you like it, let me know. Um, but here I'm trying to show you just how much sparkle you get, not only with the watercolor, but you still can see on the white area, the natural Santorini sparkle. Of course, this doesn't matter to people who aren't using Santorini stone. Um, but for those of you who don't want to lose the sparkle, whatever you leave white, you'll still be able to see that beautiful sparkle. And I can also see some of it underneath the color as well so not just the white uh, so keep that in mind you're not wrecking it <laughs> here's a picture of it just standing up there behind my my plants with a couple of Christmas lights back there isn't that beautiful gorgeous and you don't even have to do it watercolored like I did uh, you can fill it in with paint there's so many different things you could do. You could even dot it if you want. It's totally optional. I'm just here to inspire. I love you guys. Don't forget to hit that like button because a lot of people don't. Share as well if you can. Um, but just let me know what you think in the comments. Give me some more ideas um, so I don't, you know, forget anything that might be really cool right now. Uh, anything that you're interested in, give me some New Year's ideas as well. If you want to paint some cool New Year's rocks, I am here for it. Um, so stay tuned for more coming up. I love you guys. Don't forget that and keep painting no matter what, no matter what you're going through. Stay artistic, stay creative, keep painting. Every day is a new day. And you have the opportunity to make it the best. So keep going, keep painting, and I'll see you soon. Love you. Bye.